Lord, this morning, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. God, we enter into your gates this morning, thanking you, worshiping you, magnifying you, Jesus. We come into your house, God, to lift you up this morning. You are worthy, God, of all praise. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, have your way in this house this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
we are so grateful for the experience. Yes. 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 Amen. Come on. Come on. Anybody thankful for the Holy Ghost? Yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thankful for water baptism. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name. Right. And receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, for the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. Thank God for Pentecost. Amen. We are so grateful for that. I, this year will be 32 years that I've been a part of God's kingdom. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 And I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost. Uh, Brother Driscoll called and asked that we would come back. And immediately the Lord put this message on my heart. I don't know why I'm preaching it on Pentecost Sunday morning. Uh, but we want to do what God wants us to do. Yes, How many would rather that I just preach to the occasion? Yeah. Or would you rather that I follow after what God wants me to do? I, I could preach about the day of Pentecost. Yeah. 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 And uh, wouldn't be anything wrong with that. But I want to follow God's plan. Amen. I want to follow God's purpose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to go to the book of Matthew chapter 26. Verses 45 through 50, and then chapter 27, verse 3 and through 5, and then we'll go to the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 14 through 18. Matthew chapter 26, beginning with verse number 45. Matthew 26 and 45, the Bible said, Then cometh he to the his disciples. And saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he had yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came. And with him a great multitude with a sword and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayeth him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 23, or verse number 3 through verse number 5. Matthew 27, verse 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the third. 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood and they said what is it that to us see thou to that and he cast down the pieces of silver in, te in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself my Bible reading in the book of Revelations Chapter 3, verse number 14 through 18. Forgive me of my lengthy reading this morning. Revelations chapter 3 and verse 14. And after the angel of the church of the Lady Oceans, write these things, saith Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that thou shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see brother driscoll would you ask the lord to bless his word today god we're asking you lord that you would just 
step into this place right now. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost cover this service, God. Lord, anoint the lips of clay, God, as they bring forth this word. And I'm asking you to anoint the ears and the hearts of us, God, the hearers, Lord. God, that your word will do its work and not return to us. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I want to preach to the heart of this congregation. I ask that every praying saint of God would pray. That you would ask God to allow the anointing to touch the lips of clay. Yes, 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 yes. That you would pray that the hearts of every individual, the spirit of every individual in this place, All right. would be receptive to the word of the Lord. Right, right. For your consideration today, I want to preach on this subject. Walking with Jesus. While on your way to hell. Oh my God. Oh my God. Walking with Jesus. My God. While on your way to hell. My God. We live in a society today that nothing on the forefront can be taken at face value. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. On the canvas of the life that you and I see before our very eyes today. It's not as it appears. Right. It's not as we see it. Right. Amen. 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 As one engages and interacts with this world, it quickly becomes clear how the one can become so desensitized right. by the mirage that is put on in order to cover up what is really taking place in the lives and the hearts people, amen. amen, that have allowed themselves to drift so far, amen, from what humanity used to stand for. Our forefathers, as they embarked upon, amen, building a new country, a country that if you look in its past, their theme or the idea of this country was in God we trust.
to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 Didn't attend on it. I'd rather preach something else. Uh, but I gotta preach the burden of my heart today. I gotta preach what God gave me. Because I I see people, they come to church and they celebrate Pentecost and they, they shout about talking in tongues and they, they, they get all excited about our doctrine and, and, and what we believe and what we teach. And but at the end of the day, amen, when they leave the house of the Lord. I, and they've got things in their life, things in their heart. Oh, they've got things in the world that does not belong. They're not willing to dedicate, to consecrate, and to prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord. Oh, hear me today, saint of God. It's almost midnight, and there's a danger to be a part of the church, walking with the church, walking with Jesus. And all the while, you're on your way to hell. Somebody ought to be praying right now. Somebody ought to be repenting right now. Somebody ought to let God touch them right now. Paul told us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, or men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, I've never seen such a rebellious and disobedient generation. They're unthankful, they're unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Hear me today, you've got to have more than a form of godliness. It's got to be more than long hair and long dresses. It's got to be more than a holiness appearance. It's got to, honey, you've got to have the power of God to pack it up. Just because you've got long hair and long dresses and long sleeves, just because you look holy, doesn't mean you're ready for the rapture of God. July 22nd will be 32 years since I've had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
you would think that I would be more confident in my salvation. But every day that I live is the more fearful that I become, that somewhere along the journey that I get careless and I get into a place where I'm just not what doing what I should do. I'm not praying like I ought to pray. Thinking that I've got it all in a bag and I'm ready no matter when Jesus comes. But every day that I live, Sister Crystal, I, I realize I don't have it all together. I need him every time. I, I need a touch of oh, but here we go. You, 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 I know what you're saying. I hear your voice I, right now. Preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm just as sound as I ever was. I, honey, you better hear this preacher. The Bible said, I, take heed. Let's put a man thinking that he stand. He will fall. You better hear this preacher. The pride becometh more a fall. And a haughty spirit before destruction. You better hear this preacher. There is a danger of getting on a slippery slope because you get so caught up in entertainment and so caught up in social media and so caught up in your amen in your world, whatever it may be today. You know what your distraction is. I can preach from A to Z. But at the end of the day, you and Jesus know the truth of the reality. What's keeping you from really praying? What's keeping you from really dedicating? What's keeping you from really getting ready for the coming of the Lord? How long has it been since you really got down at an altar and you let the I know, don't be I know what you're going to say, preacher. Man. That's just not uh, proper. That's just not. But you don't need to preach like that. But I'm gonna preach. I don't care what you think. Honey, how long has it been since a snot flowed out of your nostrils as you laid in an altar and threw repentance before the Lord? How long has it been since you said, Lord, search every area of my heart, search every area of my spirit, above all else, I must be saved. I can't afford to be lost and go to hell. How easy it is to get sidetracked by various devices of a person of our adversary in our flesh. We should quickly remind ourselves let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, hear this preacher. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Because some of you have been playing around so long, you don't even you don't even believe what I'm preaching no more. But you need to hear these words. But you going to you know what the greatest prayer meeting is going to take place? It's not when Brother Driscoll finally gets you to a place that you realize you need to pray. That's not going to be the greatest prayer meeting on the face of the earth. I'll tell you when the greatest prayer meeting is going to take place. It's it's going to be after midnight. It's going to be after the trumpet sounds and the rapture of this great church. People are going to realize that the door is shut. That there's no more opportunity. That now you can't even cry out and give mercy. Because God has withdrawn his mercy from the face of the earth. The Bible said, amen, let no man deceive you. Except there come a falling away first. And that man is sin shall be revealed. Revealed, the son of perdition. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. Matthew tells us, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the Bible said, the same shall be saved. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that'll not be ashamed and jump up out of your pew and make your way to an altar and say, God, don't let me go to hell. Don't let me be wrong to sleep. Don't let me be lost. I'm on the house. I gotta be ready. Oh, yes. oh, Before you wrap it all up and say, preacher, you're not preaching to me. I've got it in the back. You better remember what Peter said. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall a sin ungodly and the sinner appear? I realize today that I'm preaching 
in a generation that for the most part does not even believe that hell exists because if they did, their actions would be different. Their goals and ambitions would not consist of earthly material things. They would build altars and visit them regularly. I realize today that this type of preaching does not stir people all that much anymore. But I'm going to preach to this congregation about a place called hell. Even though it is not a popular subject, it must be understood that it is a real place. The writer of Mark tells us in chapter nine, it is the hand of fifty. Mark said, you better cut it off. Better for thee to enter into life main than to have two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Did you hear me? Did you hear my words? Mark said, it's better if you get a saw and you just saw your arm off, your hand off. It would be much better you come in crippled and maimed than to go to a place called hell that the Bible said throughout eternity it's going to be a burning lake of fire it'll never be quenched he goes on to say where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched is anybody here in this preacher today there's a place called hell that the multitudes are marching into this place called hell. And we don't even believe it anymore. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It's better for thee to enter into hell or alt into life than to have two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, he said, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes to be cast into hell fire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. How can you sit there with no tears in your eyes? How can you sit there just ignoring what this preacher is having to preach today? How can you just sit there knowing that hell is real? You can say, I don't even believe in apostolic doctrine anymore. I don't even believe. I'm not even, I'm not even what, I, what I used to be. I don't even believe in that stuff anymore. You cannot believe it all you want to. But that doesn't change the fact that hell is still real. That doesn't change the fact that there will be a white throne judgment. That doesn't change the fact that God will judge the earth. It doesn't change the fact that people are going to go to hell. They cannot believe it all they want to. But you hear me today. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself beyond measure. And the multitude and the pulp and the mean man. But they're descending into this place called hell. If you could hear the voice of the rich man, he would tell you, please hear the voice of that preacher. Don't come to hell. Don't come to hell. I'm tormented. If I could only have just a tip, and then just a little bit of water on my tongue. Oh, because I'm tormented day and night. I'm preaching about a place called hell. I wish that echoing through the annuals of time, somebody could hear the response to the rich man that I've already talked about. Notice what the Bible said. He was a rich man that in his life he had all these riches. But notice what Luke said about this rich man who gave no regard to God in this life, who refused to humble himself in the presence of God and obey the plan of salvation. The Bible said in Luke, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being tormented, and seeth Abraham and afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy last time received the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou 
our heart tormented and beside all this uh, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed uh, honey when you step off into eternity into the lake of fire uh, you will not have an opportunity to make that gulf amen you will not have a bridge that will take you out of the pits of hell uh, into the wonderful presence of God in heaven uh, he said so the they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us uh, that would come from hence then he said uh, I pray thee therefore father that thou would send him to to my father's house. Amen. For I have five brethren. If you could hear the voice of that man in hell, he would tell you, don't come to this place. I want to testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment called hell. Hear me today, saint of God. Hear me today, lukewarm person, backslidden person, sinner friend, whoever you are, and wherever you are, I want to preach to you today, you don't want to go to hell, you don't want to be lost for eternity, you want to hear what I'm saying, you want to make up in your mind if you don't have the Holy Ghost, that before you leave this house, you're going to repent, you're going to let God fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I gotta preach to somebody today that hell will not be occupied just by the sinner who never darkened the church door or sits on a church pew. It will not be for those who refuse to make an effort to come to church alone. Amen. But there will be those who have sat on Pentecostal pews. Hear me! Hear me! It's not just for the sinner. It's going to be for people that stand on Pentecostal apostolic pews that have heard preaching just like this. Right. Come on. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's been a part of this thing that knew what it was to sing and shout. All right. All right. Come on. They've had all of this. But yet they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. I want those words to seek him because it's reality. You say, preacher, how do you know? I won't tell you how you know because I, the Bible bears it out. The Bible said there were ten virgins that were five were foolish and five were wise. And the foolish said, give us of your oil. And they said, not so. Lest we not have enough for ourselves. Read throughout your Bible. One was taken. They were working in the field. One was taken and one was left. There were two riding at the meal. One was taken one was left. At best, Brother Driscoll, there's going to be half the church. It's going to make it to heaven and half the are not. I ask you today, which half will you be a part of? hell or will you go to heaven? Will you get ready for the coming of the Lord or will you just let the devil and the flesh walk, rock you to sleep and cause you to be lost? I'm preaching to somebody. You've been in church for a long time, but it's been a long time since you really repented and since you really been renewed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said you're saved by the renewing and the washing of the Holy Ghost. It's not a one-time experience. you got to do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Honey, you'll let the old leak out and you won't even realize I'm just like Judas. I'm walking with the elect. I'm walking with Jesus. But while I'm doing that, I'm going As Judas walked with Jesus, one of the original twelve, he probably never dreamed, Brother Driscoll, that one day he would find himself betraying his one and only Savior. 
and to seal his destiny. The scripture said he went out and hung himself. He committed suicide and he went to hell. Is anybody hearing this preacher today? Come on, man. You see, all the while Judas was walking with Jesus, he allowed some things to get into his heart and spirit. He allowed the love of money to take root in his spirit to the point that it became his idol. I talked about idols just a little earlier on. I didn't even mean to quote that scripture here or is well, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Ah, you can't serve that pocketbook in your God. You can't serve the gods of mammon, amen, the, the gods of wealth and riches. you got to make a choice. Either you're going to live for God or you're going to live for the almighty God. Either you're going to live for God or you're going to live for entertainment. Either you're going to live for God or you're going to live for the pleasures of this life. You can't have, amen, both of them and still be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm preaching about the danger of walking with the church and all Where the Bible said the fire is not quenched and the word dieth not. Why don't somebody reach out to the Lord and pray that now? Leon Bobo Shatana Baha. Hear me today, are you on your way to hell? If Jesus was to come right now, would you be ready? Come on, somebody needs to pray. Come on, somebody needs to pray. Come on, somebody needs to pray right now. You see, because when the opportunity came, the devil trapped him. Judas because instead of repenting, the Bible said he hung himself. Instead of getting right, he took his own life. You want to know what the danger of going to Moab is? The danger is you may die in Moab and you might never make it back to the church. And while God is extending mercy and grace right now, I don't understand people, Brother Driscoll, that make decisions on a whim. No, sir. No, sir. I don't understand people that just, well, I'm just going to do this today and do that tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack up and go here, pack up and go there. No, no, oh, no, no, no. What in the world are you thinking? Do you not think that you don't belong to yourself? Do you think for one moment that you can just do whatever you want when you're a part of his church and still remain to be a part? That is a lie from the pit of hell and a lie from your fleshly appetite. The Bible said what is life, it is even as a vapor. It's here for a little while, then it vanishes away. He goes on to say, don't think you can just say I'm going to do this one day and that next day. You better be saying if the Lord will, I'll do this. And I'll do that because, honey, you can get out of the will of God in a heartbeat. And you can be on your way to hell. And be on your way to Moab. And you might not make the journey back to the church. You better hear what this preacher's saying. There's a danger of walking with Jesus. And all the while, you're on your way to hell. And you're going to burn to eternity. trying to hurt me. When is it that you've allowed to get into your heart and spirit? Is it that spirit of Pharisee that now you think you're so holy and righteous, there's no way you could backslide. And you don't even realize there are issues in your heart uh, that if God came today, you would not make it. Uh, could it be the unwillingness to submit to God's word uh, and God's plan that you become, because of your stubbornness, you de 
devise your own plan. And that plan will be how Satan destroys everything that God has ever given you. It is, is it the love of the world that you can't turn loose of your addictions? That like Demas, the scripture said, he forsook the church because the world and the lust thereof drew him away from the redemptive power of Christ Jesus. I ask you today, honey, what's got your attention? What's got you by the hand? What's leading you away from true repentance and truly living for God in a holy and godly lifestyle? You say, preacher, I still wear my long dresses and my long sleeves. I still look holy. That doesn't really matter. If you talk on the inside, you're a white sepulchre full of dead men's bones. You've got to be holy on the inside. Holy on the outside. You've got to be holy from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Come on, somebody. The Bible said forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. If you're going to be right, you've got to come to God's house. And you've got to get ready. I'm going to tell you today how people who have walked with Jesus been a part of the church. Come on, Sister Dallas. I'm going to use just a few more minutes, but I want you up here. I want to preach to you today. Brother Driscoll, forgive me for not preaching a sermon that puts the but I got to preach what God told me to preach. Because as soon as this man called me the other day, that message, this message rocked in my spirit. And I couldn't get away from it. I'm going to tell you today, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you today, how people who have walked with Jesus been a part of the church end up lost and going to hell. Can I be real with you today? <laughs> I feel such a burden. God's reaching for somebody today and you know who you are. I want to come out. I can come lay hands on you right now. I know exactly who you are. But I don't need to do that because the word is reaching into your world right now. The scripture tells us in Revelation chapter 3, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see, preacher, how, how do you know if you're cold or if you're hot? That's a very simple answer. You could watch the behavior. Sister Davis, let me ask you a question. If I quit paying you any attention, and I'm so consumed and caught up with everything else, what would you think about our relationship? If I never got excited about seeing you, and all those times you ask Sister Davis, I say, hey, come over and sit down and talk to me. I just want to spend some time with you. And she'll be busy at the house and say, hey, will not you come get in the truck with her? Why don't we go ride and just, I just want to spend some time with you. That's all I want to do. Just, you can tell our relationship, it's not cold. It's not indifferent. You say, what has that got to do with Jesus? I'll tell you what it's got to do. How many times have you just said, oh God, it might not be convenient right now, but I, I just got to spend some time with you. I've just got to talk to you. I've just got to commune with you. I just got to. I just got to have you whisper that you love me, that you care about me, 
that you want to bless me. How long has it been since you spent a long time at the altar and you wept before the Lord and said, God, nothing in this world matters like you do to me, Jesus. Nothing matters in this world that I would want to be lost and I would want to go to hell and I would want to lose help with a, with a God that saved me. I ask you today, how long has it been since you spend quality time at the altar? I'm not talking about just, just saying whatever comes to your mind. I'm talking, the Bible said that we know not what we ought to pray. That the Spirit prays for us with moanings and groanings and utterances that we, we, we don't even understand. I ask you, how long has it been since you've prayed in the Holy Ghost. You want to know if you're lukewarm or not? I'll tell you how you know. The Bible said that them that are born of the Spirit are men of the Spirit. How long has it been that you let Jesus lead you and guide you and direct you and help you make your decisions and help you make your everyday agenda? I'll tell you how you know. How long has it been since you ran and shouted and danced and talked in tongues and the joy of the Lord was your strength and when joy unspeakable and full of glory you had a smile upon your face oh, because I'm telling you we got way too many grumpy Pentecostals we got way too many unhappy depressed Pentecostals that's not the God that I serve he's not a God of depression he's not a God of oppression the Bible said it's joy unspeakable and full of glory the Bible said the joy I can draw from the well of salvation. I'll tell you how you know. Honey, you got a step in your step and a spring in your life because the Bible said it will be in your well springing up. But the everlasting God promotes somebody. There ought to be spontaneous worship. There ought to be the Bible said, Paul said, I get beside myself. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. Don't you reach out to the Lord right now? Come on, pray, 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 pray. I'm just about done, but I, I want you to hear what I'm saying today. I got just a little while longer. I, Come on, somebody. That's it. Let the tears flow. That's it. Let the tears flow. That's it. Really repent. God, you need to get right with a brother, with a sister. Take this opportune time and make your calling and your election. Sure, don't go to hell while you're walking with Jesus. Because we have people sitting on our pews backsliding because they allow themselves <laughs> to get into a place where they don't feel the urgency to pray and really pray until they know they're right with God. They found a comfort zone and in this place they find themselves not really being stirred where they truly repent and get their heart Right with God. Church becomes a routine and not a passion. Living for God becomes a tradition and no longer are we stirred to the examine our lives. But now, like Judas, we find ourselves in a place that we do not even realize how far we have drifted from our Lord and Savior. And even though we may be a part of the company and walking in essence with Jesus, deep down we know that there are things in our heart and spirit that if God came right now, we would be lost. Our altar services uh, are not just for the sinner uh, and the backslider. Why don't you stand to your feet? Uh, but every one of us should diligently seek the face of God lest we find ourselves walking with Him, uh, but not really being ready for the rapture of this great church. Oh, come on, somebody. Forget about everybody else. Forget about everything else. Don't be a Judas. Don't be like Judas. Don't just come to church and just let every service pass you by. Don't come to church and walk with the church. And all the while you're walking with the church and you're walking with Jesus. You're on your way to hell. An unquenchable fire that when the Bible said the world dieth not. 
Come on, you need to repent. Come on, you need to get right with God. Come on, you need to get your, 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 your ideas and your dreams and your goals and your ambitions. You need to burn them at an altar and say, God, not my will, but thy will, not my way, but thy way, oh Lord. David said, know that I sin to the heaven. He's there. He said, though I make my bed in hell. He said, the Lord there. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how far you run. God is always going to be there. The question is, when you go there, will you be in the will of God? When you go there, will you be doing what God told you to do? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And all these other things shall be added unto you. He said, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for itself. I'm preaching about the danger of walking with Jesus. And while you're walking with Jesus, there's a danger of being in your way. Come on, don't just spend a few minutes in the altar and just go somewhere else and do something else. It's time to pray. 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 Oh, I preach to this somebody. You know you need to be praying. Oh, you need to quit letting things distract you and take your attention away from true repentance and from truly getting ready for the rapture of this great church. I preach to about the danger of walking with church and walking with Jesus and while you're doing that you're on your way to hell, hear me, hear me hear me, hear me right now come on pray, come on pray come on pray, come on pray come on see the face of God reach out to the Lord right now Lord, take control. 
preaching repentance. It needs to be a daily thing. Every day. Every day. You need to check yourself. You need to search your heart. You need to search your mind. You need to search your life. You need to repent daily. Remember, I have, have given you scripture over and over again. Paul said, I die daily. We've got to die out to our flesh. Every day. And if we don't, it, it, it's going to be a hard thing to stand before God 
and you think everything is all right and hear him say, depart from me, I never knew you. You know who he knows? He knows the people that stay in contact with him. He knows the people that are willing to lay down the world and lay down the things of this world that are pulling against him. This is a battle, folks. You're in an everyday battle for your soul. Church is not just a recreational thing. We don't just come here to, to greet and meet and to eat and love each other. And that's not what this is all about. We do that. We love each other. We do meet. We do eat. Amen. But that's not what it's all about. What it's really all about is getting closer to God. Walking into a place where His presence just dwells. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what? He wants you to get to the place where you're driving down the highway. And all of a sudden, His presence can enter your car because you're in such tune with Him. Hallelujah. My God. That's what this pastor longs for. Is everybody in this congregation to be so in touch with God. And so repentant. Amen. That you've got everything out of your life. Thank God. You see, what hinders God in our lives? What hinders us from hearing from God? Hearing from God. A lot of people tell me, I don't know how, to, how I can hear from God. I, I want to hear His voice, but I don't know how. Can we tell you how? Get all the garbage out from between Him and you. Keep it out from in between Him and you. How many times has God wanted to use you, but because of all the stuff you had in your life between you and him, he couldn't even speak to you. You wouldn't listen. You wouldn't hear him. That's what repentance does. It clears that stuff out of the way. It gets bad spirits. It gets things in your world that don't need to be there out of the way so that God can speak to you directly and use you. Hallelujah. That's his desire. That's his desire, man. Some of the best times I've had have not even been at the church. Some of the best times I've had with God have been in a prayer meeting with my wife at the house or, or, or we'll be driving down the road just singing and all of a sudden the presence of God just come in the car. Those are some of the best times I've had with him. Hallelujah. I don't take nothing for that. Amen. There's nothing that can take the place of that. This world has got nothing to offer me. Oh, my. Now, I've been raised in this. I, I came up in this. Amen. I, I've had the Holy Ghost over 50 years now. It's fixing to be 52 here just in another week. Amen. This, this coming week, I'll have 52 years into this thing. Do you know what? There's never been a place that I've looked back and thought, I shouldn't have done this. There's never been an exit road that I wanted to take out of this. Amen. There's been plenty of exits offered to me over the years. I'll promise you that. And you will have the same thing. There's always going to be exit signs. You can get off the road here, but I like this straight and narrow. I said, I like this straight and narrow. Amen. You know what? Uh, sometimes the traffic might get a little heavy on it and, 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 and I have to slow down a little bit. You know, but when I slow down, it's those times that God can really speak to me the way he wants to speak to me. Hallelujah. And that's not, that's not discounting the fact that if you don't live a repentant life, I'm not willing to take the chance that if I, make a, if I commit a sin right now, the next second God may take me. How many, how many horrible stories have I got that I, as a pastor that I can tell you of people that have rejected God and the moment that they did, God took them out. How many horrible stories can I tell you like that? God gave them a chance and, 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 and I preached the word to them and then all of a sudden they're gone. And, and, and I have, they have no chance of repentance. That was the last chance that God gave them. But you understand, amen, we're all in that category this morning. It doesn't matter whether you claim the Holy Ghost and claim to be in church or not. Amen. 
We don't need to claim the Holy Ghost. We need to know we've got the Holy Ghost living inside. You, you don't need to go tell everybody, I think I've got the Holy Ghost. You need to know without a doubt. It, it ought to shine through you so much that the world around you don't even have to question whether you've got it or not. They automatically know you have it. Hallelujah. Because he shines through you. The only way he... Oh, my... I was raised in an era of time. Uh, in fact, just a couple years before me and, and some of the times, uh, I mean, as a young person, just a young kid, I remember going to Brush Arbor meetings and they had them old coal oil lanterns hanging. Anybody know what a coal oil lantern is? Kerosene lanterns hanging all out there. And, and they would, what would happen was that old, if they weren't trimmed exactly right, that, that old black smut would get up on the inside of that globe and it would dim the light down to where it didn't shine out. And so what they would do is take that old globe off, not while it's hot, <laughs> take that old globe off and then they would take a piece of newspaper and run up in there and just turn it around and around and get all that soot out of it and clean it and put it back up. That's like our lives. We allow things of the world to come in and to interfere with our walk with God. And, and we, we kind of sort of repent of them, but yet they kind of stay there. And what the, what the realist, realistic idea is, is that they, they have created a soot in the spirit. We're talking spirit here, okay? They've created a spiritual soot so your light won't shine out. Hallelujah. God is not going to work in an unclean temple. Sorry. He said he wouldn't. He said, I won't dwell in an unclean temple. He wants everything out of us. Hallelujah. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. I, I know too much to be lost. Have I made mistakes or have I batted a hundred? I've made mistakes. I can promise you I've made mistakes. But you know what I do? When I come to the realization, and, and can I tell you, the Holy Ghost is the is the guide, and and when you make a mistake, that thing will click your brain just in a heartbeat. You'll realize, oh my goodness, I just messed up. So what do you do? Right then, don't hold a grudge against somebody. Right then, kill that thing, repent of it, get it out of your life. Once and for all, so that God can use you. Amen. Besides that, so you can go to heaven. Right. Hallelujah. How many of us want to spend eternity with Jesus? Yeah, <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. If, 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 if this is only a taste of what he's going to be like, I can't wait to stand around the throne. I can't wait, amen, to join that crowd around the throne. Hallelujah. You know why? Because... If this is only a taste, imagine what it's going to be like right there beside him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I appreciate Brother Davis following the Holy Ghost this morning. That's what we always ask is that our ministers just follow the Holy Ghost. I don't care. We don't have an agenda here. Amen. We just want God to be able to speak through us as a conduit of the Spirit. Amen. So in closing, let's just lift our hands right now. Let's just worship the Lord one more time. My God, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Lord, I worship you, O oh God. God, I magnify your name, O oh Lord. I love you, Jesus. God, you are so awesome, Lord. We love you and we worship you, God. Lord, I thank you, God. I praise you, Lord. I glorify you, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Okay, ladies, you know, before March the 15th, when was our last service, we had started.